I'm 31 years old. I am a CEO and founder of an influencer agency, and I also own multiple e-commerce businesses. Annually, I make anywhere between $150,000 and $180,000 a year. My apartment's about 1,500 square feet. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath located in the Financial District in Manhattan. My rent is $9,000 per month and the utilities are about $400 a month. So my monthly payment is $4,400 per month. My fiance pays the other half. My fiance is very successful. One of the main ways we've been able to make our relationship work throughout the years is by remaining very financially independent from each other. We own completely separate businesses in different industries. We have separate checking accounts, even though I do really depend on him financially to be able to live in such a nice apartment in New York. I've always considered my living space a work of art. My house to me is very personal because I spend a lot of time here. I work here, I sleep here, I work long hours, so I very rarely leave. So it's really important for me to feel at home all the time. And part of that is really making this a very creative space for me. I spend a lot of time and money decorating and making it really feel like my space. I invest the most in my bedding because it's a recharging station. I need rest to be able to work and be functional and be a happy human and a good partner and a good dog mom. So investing in my bedding is well worth it to me. I'm buying new pieces often and I love decorating so it never really feels like my work is done. Decorating is definitely my number one hobby. I love the windows most about my apartment. Windows are a luxury in New York. I learned that when I moved here and we have 11 windows so I get a lot of light and it's really bright and I'm able to decorate in them, I can sit in them. My biggest complaint about my apartment is the price. I've only lived here for a few years but I'm still not used to the cost of living in New York. I try not to think about it too often because when I do I think about how we could have a bigger space and I could have a yard for my dog. I typically wake up around 10. I don't set an alarm for myself. I try to get eight hours of sleep in. When I wake up in the morning, I check my phone right away. It's a habit that I'm trying to break, but I look at the sales that came in from the night before and I just scan through my emails to see if there's anything urgent that needs attention. From there, I go to the kitchen and I have my vanilla cold brew with oat milk. Every single morning, I look forward to it every day. While I'm in the kitchen, I feed Penny, and then I make my way to the office to start my day. I have a dog, her name is Penny. She's a five pound Yorkshire Terrier, she's five years old. I adopted her when I was living in San Diego, and she travels all over the world with me. She's really my best friend. I work from home, so my typical day after I have my coffee, I get on my computer, and I stay there for about 10 hours. I run three e-commerce sites. I manage them with a small team. My most well-known business is blogging. I started that a few years ago and that's actually what helped me build my other businesses. My blog provides lifestyle content and viewers can purchase products that I recommend, but they can also purchase the products that I've also designed myself. My influencer agency is a community resource for influencers to learn about how to manage their business as well as providing job opportunities for them to grow their business. I have a small team that I have to pay each month, which contributes to a large portion of my business expenditures. I currently pay for three websites. The hosting is $45 per website per month. I use various analytic programs to manage the campaigns that I'm working on for myself as well as other influencers, which can cost anywhere between $50 to $250 per month. The CRM system that I use costs $79 per month. My inventory of product and services costs about $6,000 per month. Most of the time when I leave the apartment, it's for a meeting, in which case I'm dressed up. So I often take a car, very rarely take the train, which ends up running me about $400 per month. I don't have a savings account. I don't save money traditionally, I would say. I actually reinvest most of my income back into my business and other ventures, but I also really like to spend money on enjoying my life. Fashion is a big component of my blogging business because I post photos on Instagram highlighting a lot of fashion items, but also because I design items myself. 
I've designed a capsule collection of outerwear that's available in the spring, fall, and winter. So I spent a lot of time designing that and sourcing fabrics and vendors. I don't actually spend a lot of money on clothes. I receive many items in exchange for social media coverage or collaborations. I donate most of my closet every month to Veterans of America. I purposely work with brands that I know that I can wear far past our job together because then I can actually save money on clothes. I can also pull items from showrooms if I need to shoot something specific or something that's a little bit out of my price range. On my blog, I sell affiliate products, which I'm able to make a small income from that, but also provide really valuable content to visitors so they can see products that I recommend and products that I use and buy them straight from my site. Beauty is extremely important in my career. It generates more conversation and product purchases than any part of my blogging business. I'm able to also save money because I get 99.9% .9 of my products for free to test or to talk about in exchange for social media coverage. Photography is extremely important to my business. Everybody's online and when they see your photos, it's a first impression. I spend about $900 per month on photography. I can save money by taking photos in my apartment by myself with a tripod. So I can probably save about $500 a month on extra hours that I don't need to pay a photographer for. I also save money on photography by editing my own photos. I spend about five hours a week retouching photos. When I was living by coastally I was able to rent my apartment in San Diego and all of a sudden the building changed policies and I was no longer able to do that and it caused a really big financial burden for me. And also starting another business, within six months I accumulated a large amount of debt. I have $30,000 in debt, I pay about $500 a month to pay down my debt. I don't have credit cards because I've been very irresponsible financially in the past with credit cards. My most expensive bill besides rent is our health insurance. Last year, we collectively paid $1,400 per month. My monthly subscriptions are Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Showtime, Amazon Music, Amazon Prime, iTunes Music. I have a subscription to Keep Candles, where I get a candle each month. I spend about $300 per week on groceries, and that's because I buy for both my fiance and I. Between takeout and going out to dinner, I personally spend about $300 to $400 per week. My biggest financial weakness is shoes. I spend anywhere from $500 to $900 on shoes. I really try to keep it under $1,000. That's my limit. I have about $30,000 worth of shoes. I splurge on Penny in almost every way possible. Most of Penny's toys are gifts, so I don't actually spend a lot of money on toys, but we spend a lot of money on bones. She prefers elk antler, which runs about $10 a pop, and she has 11. My biggest cost for Penny is travel. When we travel, we have to go to the vet, which is $120 to see her doctor and get a wellness check. Then we have to get an approval by the USDA, which is $140. I travel a lot, but it's never consistent. There are times of year where I don't even get on a plane for three or four months, and then there's a period of three months where I'm basically gone the entire time. So the amount that I spend per month is very different, but per trip, I can spend anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 on a trip. Over the past year, I've been to six countries and I've probably traveled about 15 times. I struggled so much financially in my 20s that it feels so good to finally buy things that I always wanted, go out to nice dinners, travel, and I don't regret it. My usual work day from home is about 10 hours, but it can change drastically based on what I'm working on. After a long day, I love to just sit on the couch and turn on the TV and relax. It's really the only way I can really separate myself and keep my sanity. My biggest financial stress is the transition between living the life that I live now and moving towards a more responsible financial future. From struggling in my 20s financially to overspending in my 30s, I've always had an issue with cash flow. It's been a very feast or famine type of style of spending and that also is because my businesses fluctuate and of course my paycheck is never regular. I think it's really important that 
women pursue their dreams and create lives and businesses that they're proud of. I don't want someone to look at me and wonder how does she do it because it's crazy and sometimes I don't even know if I can do it and sometimes I want to quit. But as long as I keep working and I focus on my goals and keep moving forward, I know that I can continue with my success.